All right, welcome back to the I Am Nerd podcast, guys. We are here for episode 14 today, so we are now officially two weeks worth of episodes in. We're going to be talking about Jujutsu Kaisen today, one of the most popular animes. Okay, I got thrown off. You said we're two weeks in, and I was like, the hell is he talking about? No, I mean like 14 it, episodes. And then it, then watch I, it. Yeah, and then I was yeah. like, oh, like yep. actually, yes. we're to watch two weeks straight. The number 14. Yeah, don't yep. worry about me. Let, oh, you don't got to hit me like that. I, I'm He's sorry. Just, you know like, me. You know, the number 14. <laughs> oh, excuse me. There are seven days in a week, and I said there's two of them, so that's 14. Yeah, right. But, you know, I'm not it's a math magician. What, what if it's a leap week? What the fuck is a leap week? Well, one week out of every four years of weeks, there's one extra day in a week. You're full of shit. No, for, it's the same as a leap year. You're full of shit. No, I'm not. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, we're here for Jujutsu Kaisen, guys, so ignore the fucking rants. Anyways, so this uh, this anime is really popular. Uh, we talked about it a couple times, I feel like, throughout the last several yeah, episodes. Mentioned. Mentioned. Yeah, we mentioned it a lot, compared to the bleach and stuff like that, and talked about some of the issues I have with it. But today we're going to be spending a whole episode on it. So I actually want to start off with things that Jujutsu Kaisen does well. And before we get into that, I am Gojo. That's not fair. Life isn't fucking fair. <laughs> it's not fair at all. Yeah, well, yeah, well, what life is isn't this? fair. I'm Gojo. Uh, me I too. am Satoru. I'm what? also Gojo. What the fuck? <laughs> no, listen, listen, just... listen. What? I can explain. I can Wait. explain. No, Gojo is infinity, which okay. means there's enough of him to go around. <laughs> fuck you. Okay, <laughs> you're trying to take my character. Why can't you be Nobara or somebody? How are you going to just take Gojo? Uh, I, I I feel like it's in lore. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'll, I'll accept. So, but to this episode, he we are both is Gojo. Infinity. We're both Gojo today. It's fine. That's right. I will share. I will fucking share. <laughs> <laughs> Since you decided to just jump on the wagon, damn it! All right, but yeah, we wanna we wanna give uh, Jujutsu Kaisen his flowers. So let's talk about some of the things that Jujutsu Kaisen does well because it does do a lot of things well, right? It does. Uh, well, one of the main things is the animation. I mean, immediately episode one. I know you feel the same way, but it is just clean. The animation's out of control. The, re- the animation's out of control. I know you were just <laughs> talking about episode one, but there's a the episode where they fight the plant demon. Yes, I, I thought you were going the, there. I the thought you were going tree there. Tree demon. Oh my god! Episode is out of control. Oh my god! The animation on that shit when the vines start growing out and they start surfing on them and all that shit. That shit is wild. And there was um basically I'm not going to get into it, but there was in Fire Emblem Heroes. It's a Fire Emblem phone game. They released a character called Gatekeeper. It was voted on. It's a big rant. But somebody did an animation where they took that episode of JJK, that fight, and I don't know the exact term, but they essentially animated over it and made it look like Gatekeeper and Alphonse, another Fire Emblem character, and this oh. other character named Edelgard. And so the plant demon was like Edelgard, and the like Gatekeeper was Toto. That's really cool. And they cool. fucking did the animation over top of that episode, and the shit was so tight. You have like, to show. I need to see that. I 100 percent have to show you. It's yeah, that's really, 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 really cool. Really that cool. the animation on that episode in particular is so insane to me. Like, and that's, yeah, that's really my, at towards the end of the season, but in general, 24 episodes. That's my favorite fight. Yes, I mean because the rest of them aren't really much of a fight. Like, yeah, that, at least that when fight. I think of. I guess Gojo. None of his fights are real. He just destroys people. But yeah, the other fights I mean, I guess... are hot, but that's just because Gojo is Gojo. Yes, I think the Shunin exams of this anime were pretty good, though. Like they had that whole little tournament. You know, the every Shunin exams were cool. Yeah, they're called the Kyoto Exchange. Ex- yeah, Kyoto, Kyoto Exchange, Exchange event. It, it has the you know every Shonen these days has a tournament arc, and yeah. you know My Hero Academia has one. Obviously, Naruto has one. Dragon Ball Z, which pretty much started that whole thing. Yu Yu Hakusho. Um, what am I missing? I'm missing so many, I'm sure. But yeah, every every yeah, relevant yeah, uh, Does Bleach Hunter, Hunter. have a tournament arc? No. Hmm. I'm trying to even think of a filler, but I guess not. Bleach does not have a tournament arc. No. No. Not even a filler. So yeah, Bleach, Bleach doesn't Bleach doesn't have a tournament arc, even though it's one of the the the, the big three. But yeah, that's actually interesting. <laughs> but yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen has a tournament arc pretty early on, especially whenever we're talking about an anime with students. You know, there's going to be a tournament. Like you yeah, just know. For sure. If there's a, if there's, I like your, by the way, I like your uniforms because that's something that's kind of cool when you look at anime because so many anime have uh, a school setting. Yes. And they all have, even the ones that have a uniform that looks almost normal, they all have their own little design in it. Like, I none like of that too. Yeah. No anime school uniform is actually what they wear in Japanese school. So, anyway, right. my point is I do like their, their school uniforms. They're, they're nice. Yeah. I like, I also like how you said there's, there is, 
there's a bit of individualism with each of the uniforms. So the main yep. character, Yuji, has you know the little red collar hood looking thing. I was thinking about uh, being him for Halloween this year. Actually, it's very basic. I wonder if people would get it. I feel like it, I feel it's like clean it's though. I mean, a normal person won't get it, but anybody that's seen the show would get it immediately. I think. You think so? Yeah. Especially if you have the collar, like yeah. the hood collar, and the gold buttons. The yeah, world. like I think I, yeah, I think it's it's pretty. It's just such a simple design, it. but I do think it's effective. Um, it's not quite an orange tracksuit, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is. It is very it's unique clean. to him. That looks like something you could just wear too. Like it's it a does. pretty clean outfit. Like I don't need to wear it just for Halloween. I could actually just wear that and be yeah. fine. Like in the fall like, time. Yeah, and yeah, like Gojo's, he has the really high like kind of collar that comes up, and then obviously he wears that blindfold thing, and he that's his like own way. I think the girl Nabara, hers is like a like a does she have a, she has a skirt right? She hers, has a isn't it a long dress? I don't remember. She has it, some sort of skirt or dress. Yeah, they all pretty much they all have their own versions of it, which is cool. Even though they're all wearing the same uniform theoretically, it's like slightly customized for each character, which I do like that. By the way, I always forget her name, but not just her. I forget every character's name in this show except for two of them. And we'll okay, well, that. I also forget most of the characters' name in the show, but luckily, before we started recording this episode, I went and looked them all up. <laughs> so, yeah, because... I think it's a combination of things. I think the more I watch it, if more seasons come out, etc., as time yes. goes on, I'll remember their episode. I mean, remember their names. Um, but we've only seen like twenty-four episodes, and we saw yeah. them really quickly and yeah i watched it in a night and a half yeah you watched it really quickly it's really hard to capture some of the characters names except you know the best like the absolute best characters like you know gojo you knew sukuna or whatever however you say his name the deep the main demon yeah and and i remember one episode of this podcast we actually stumbled on each dory's name we couldn't we even... did because we were like i don't know the main character's name yeah and, and as through talking eventually one of us was like oh shit it's this worry. yeah but yeah, the animation on this anime is top notch. So when I think about top animation, we can't not talk about Demon Slayer, right? That was Demon the Slayer, best animation. Uh, one Punch Man. Yes. Season but one. I, I believe Demon Slayer won the award uh, for the 2019 like best animation in anime. Essentially, like there were several awards that 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 yeah. anime won, and I'm pretty sure animation was like. And every time it was nominated for that type of category, it won. I could easily see Jujutsu Kaisen winning that award uh, for the 2021 this, season. Did it come out 20, this year or last year? I feel like Jujutsu Kaisen, maybe it started at the end of 2020. You know what? It, pro- yeah. it definitely started in 2020 and it ended in 2021 is okay. what happened. But yeah, usually in those instances, if it's at the end of the year, it gets it gets moved until in the yeah. next year. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I could see it when on the top of my head. I don't really know of anything else that came out this year that beats it in terms of pure animation quality. Yeah, I mean, there's one other thing that I watched, and I I, I mentioned uh, Vivi Florite's Eye Song. Yeah, the Terminator anime, right? Yes, Terminator that, inspired ish. Yep, it's very Terminator. It's literally the same concept as Terminator, but just with like a cutesy idol robot type of girl um, who looks like Miku. The Hatsune. Hatsune, yeah, it's very interesting. I don't know if it's blatantly supposed to be inspired by Miku or something, but it looks very much like Miku to me. And it's also a singer and just like a pop star. But mm. uh, not to get too sidetracked, the animation on that anime, they use a lot of CG. It's done very well. And the animation overall is just very fucking good. I think the CG that they use in Jujutsu, Ka- Jujutsu Kaisen is also really good. Like I've noticed that when that the plant demon thing was uh, spreading out the vines, some of that was definitely like CG, you could tell, yeah. right? Yeah, and it just looked really clean. I know people like to complain about CG, apparently, but no, it was they, done well. A lot of times, CG, especially back in the day, if you could def- like, okay, perfect example, Battle of the Gods, the movie Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I love that movie, but there's a part in Beerus and Goku's fight. The fight is so dope, but then there's a part where it's randomly in CG and it just looks off. Like it doesn't. You can yeah. immediately see it and immediately doesn't look good. Like why yeah. did you just? Why did you randomly do CG here? You were doing great. Like, why is this random yeah, CG, bit of CG thrown in? It doesn't have to be bad, but sometimes it is done pretty poorly. But this anime does it really well. Their budget, I, the, the, all the fights are animated so well, their budget has to be really high, I would think. Maybe, but something that's something a lot of people say, right? Like, oh, the budget must be really high. But something that we found out with One Punch Man, for example... When everybody saw One Punch Man Season 1's animation, they're like, oh my fucking god, like the budget is crazy, they spent money, they really cared. 
But then what got revealed is that the budget was exactly the same as any other anime. And oh, they wow. just had people working on it that really went ham. Like the people yeah. that were working on it were really excited to work like, on it. Even though they were getting the same amount of money, theoretically, yep. the they budget just was went the same. fucking ham. <laughs> they just decided to be so passionate about their work because they animate every motion of the attacks in the show. There's none of that still image thing where you see characters attack and they just kind of freeze the frame and it's just you know that's like that's them fighting back and forth i hate that apparently that uh that new netflix anime something of the gods or whatever it's called oh the manga was so good i heard the manga is insane what is it called it's called the record of ragnarok i'm talking about that yes record of ragnarok is actually amazing as far as the The manga manga goes that's what i've heard the but anime is such a I've been told to down. skip the anime because it's that bad that they did it that fucked up. <sighs> the it really so sucks. Good. It really sucks though because I'm a person who likes watching anime if you tell me that there's good fights in the manga. And yeah. For this to be a I'm assuming it's an action anime, right? Like it's probably a yeah, lot of fighting. To not to to just give a really quick premise of Rector Ragnarok if you don't know what it is, it's just It's essentially the entire anime is a tournament arc. It's just the gods have deemed that humans are fuck humans and that they're going to wipe humans out. Yeah. Like the Valkyries proclaim that they humans have a right to defend themselves and they have like this thing called the Ragnarok. And it's basically a tournament where they collect like 13 of the greatest humans throughout history versus 13 gods. And they have one on one tournament fights. And basically each part of it is just a human versus a god and What's really cool is that they actually have a fair, a fairly impressive amount of writing in explaining the characters as they get introduced. A character gets introduced, both the god and the human, they do the backstory and the background and build up an emotional connection to the character, all within the span of one fight. And by the end of the fight, one of them is dead. Yeah. Like, without, like, one of them dies at the end of every single fight, period. That just gets established very early on. Uh, and it's just really interesting. The fights are really good, and they do a really good job of connecting with the characters. Um, you have a quick overview of some of the names listed, because they show you the list of names early on. It's like Loki, Thor, uh, Zeus, um, in terms of gods, Poseidon. Then, on terms of humans, Nikola Tesla was listed. Um, we haven't seen him yet, but fucking Nikola Tesla, uh, Jack the Ripper... Adam the first man. As that sounds Adam so Eve. crazy. Adam, Adam the sounds... first man is my favorite. Yeah, that, like, that... I feel like he should be the strongest uh, character like... on the human side. I feel like he should be the OP as fuck captain of the humans. Absolutely insane. Like his power <laughs> perception, his hockey, his yeah. shutting down, whatever you want to call it. He's like the nuts. Adam the first man. Like what a title! It's so amazing. Yeah, that title is wild. Lubu. Lubu is on the yep. side of the humans. Uh, who I play with in uh, Dynasty Warriors. Yeah. Pretty much so it's it's nice really character. cool. It's got a fun cast, and uh, it's really, really cool. The manga's well done. I highly recommend reading the manga. Uh, don't go anywhere near the anime. Uh, yeah, I heard the animation is just that bad. <laughs> it's that yep. bad. But Jujutsu Kaisen's animation is the exact opposite of that. JJK's animation is top tier. There's not much else to say about it. If you watch it, I'm sure everyone will agree. It looks amazing. It's some of the best fights animated that I've ever seen. Definitely competes with Demon Slayer. I would actually love to see them both go head to head in an animation style award show, I guess, or like, you know, that where they're both nominated essentially. I would love to see which one will come out on top because I need more anime crossovers. I need just like TV specials and filler. And like when we do filler arcs, how dope would it be? I don't remember what studio does JJK and what studio does, uh, what UFO Table does Demon Slayer. Yes. But let's say. We had two anime on the same studio because I, I guess crossing studios wouldn't be an option. But imagine if they were both in the same studio and they wanted to do like a, a small little filler arc. We got like a fucking JJK demons like Itatori ends up that would Demon be Slayer really or something. fucking cool. Do you or remember? Like, did you uh, ever watch Death Parade? I never finished it. I never finished it. I saw okay. like the first four episodes. Damn it! There's a cameo in there from another Madhouse production. Yeah, and, I do uh, have to finish it. it. Yeah, just finish it. But yeah, all right. So I mean. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, we talked about how it's very similar to Bleach in a sense that the main character is essentially better than the other humans that exist. He breaks world records in turn in like episode one. I almost said on yeah. turn one. I think on turn one, baby. I almost said on turn one. It, I mean, you're not wrong. I think, uh, yeah, I think it's clear to me 
that its most obvious inspirations are Bleach and Naruto. Yes, curses being like hollows. I, I definitely feel that the main character being able to sense them, whereas most humans cannot. Just the way Ichigo was able to sense Shin, like Shinigami's and hollows. And you also have him, episode one, choosing to become like something that can save his friends. That's literally what yeah. it's about. Like he decides to save Rukia in episode one, Ichigo does, and Itadori decides to swallow the demon finger, you know, the cursed object. He's told you will most likely die. This is usually this usually ends in death. And for Ichigo to get the hollow powers, he had to get stabbed with yeah. the sword. Yeah. So he does it, becomes super powerful. And then what's really cool is that episode two, Gojo, the strongest jujitsu sorcerer in the fucking world, apparently, like he blatantly tells that himself, says, like, you know what? If you can call him out right now and just let it let me fight him, and then if when I'm done in a certain time limit, just switch back. If you can do that, this is this is good. Like you can be his vessel. And uh they duke it out episode two, and it just looks looks crazy i it's actually fucking want- clean when they dude the part where like sakuna goes to swing and gojo like turns around and leans on his back yes like, yes he, he fucking sits on his ass like, i said oh this fuck. guy is the real deal because you're you're told very early on that sukuna is like the one like he yes. is the strongest demon basically yep. so when you see someone fighting against basically him you know i guess a, a small portion of his power at that point though right yeah one finger of his yeah power. but even still when you see somebody fighting against him and they're kind of toying with him it, it it's like damn and yep. then after and the then, fight the main yep. character asked the question we're all wondering <laughs> like if you two fought if you fought sakuna when he has all of his fingers who will win and he said he would be troublesome but I will win. But ultimately, I, yeah. he says it with a smile, yo. <laughs> yeah, like he he's not threatened by Sakuna at all at full power, which is wild. And then you come to find out there's a reason for that. That fucking power that Gojo has, I still don't even know how to categorize it. it is Gojo's so ridiculous. power is crazy. I it's funny, coincidentally, like right after we decided we were doing this in my YouTube recommend recommendations, it's just funny how it works. A video popped up saying like uh it was basically just a guy explaining gojo's power and it's basically this guy just had access to a magazine that the author explained his power in oh he explained his power without going to any manga spoilers he was like he did mention a small manga spoiler but luckily it had no context or any explanation so i don't know what the fuck it is and yeah didn't dwell on it and just moved past it but basically I'm going to do a horrible job explaining this. And this is something that excites me for the future of the show. So the author is very much in tune with what he's doing and he knows what he's writing. And that's something that's exciting. It's, I'm going to touch on that on a different plot point that we're going to bring up later. But essentially Gojo's power is a paradox. It's a mathematical paradox. I'm not going to be able to explain the thing very well, but basically there's like a, a story, an idiom or whatever. I don't know, but it's uh, the idea of, I think it's called Achilles and the turtle is the example they use. Okay. And it's, it's a fable where somebody tells Achilles to race a turtle, but the turtle has to get a head start. So the turtle gets, a, like, let's say, a meter head start, and then Achilles, Achilles goes to catch up with him. And the way the paradox goes is that he'll never catch up to the turtle because there's an infinite amount of space between Achilles and the turtle. Because at first, they're a full distance away from each other. Yeah. And then it's half distance. And then a quarter, and then a third, and then an eighth, and then a... And but then, like, never... essentially, essentially, as close, you keep getting closer, there's still an infinite amount of distance between you that can yeah. be divided mathematically. And that creates, like, a paradox. And that's the idea. And then the guy goes and explains it. He's like, he gives like a number and it's like, it's that divided by zero. And then, Yeah, so they said if point A and point B, the distance between point A and point B, you can never actually get. You can never. Essentially. Yeah, because there's technically an infinite. Between distance. zero and one, there are infinite numbers. Yes, because 1.999999999 on to infinity is the closest you can technically get to the number two. Yes. Because there's an infinite amount of space between one and two and so it's this interesting paradox because we do know two exist we do know two comes after one however one can never get to two because there's an infinite amount of space between one and two and that is gojo's power in that he sort of has control over the infinity he can bring it into reality apparently Which is crazy. You so can like, make infinity real. When the lava crazy. guy goes to touch him, and he's like, I stopped. And he's like, well, you didn't stop per se. You're just slowing down because the closer you get to me and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's insane. He can also teleport. Uh, he has those those colors. I don't even know what to think about. They haven't explained it yet, but the colors are just wild. Yeah. He, just, he can fuse the colors together, create new colors, and fuck you up. He has Kai Blast, really, really strong energy attacks. I'm surprised at how big the one ball of energy he shot at the guy from really far away, the, we keep calling him the plant demon. 
Yeah, the plant demon. I don't remember her name. I want to look it up because I'm tired of saying the plant demon. <laughs> it was a tree demon, yo. Like that was that's what it was. Hanami. The, Hanami? The, yeah, Hanami. The plant okay. demon's name. Hanami means flower in Japanese. So. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. When he fired that blast at Hanami, that shit took that forest down so quick. I was like, God damn. Yeah, it was cool because it it didn't look like he it didn't look like it was destroyed. It looked like as the ball passed through, it made things like cease to exist, right? Yes. Like it, you see how deep it was? It created this yeah. big ass chasm. Like it went really deep below the ground. It wasn't really more so like above ground as much. It was really deep, like it cut through the ground really bad. I was like, God damn, this character is really strong. We're already getting stuff that I feel like I mean, you can start destroying several structures. Dangerous. There's a reason why they they do something pretty smart. They immediately make it so that he's He's the strongest, so he's obviously very busy. He's yes. dealing with shit all over the world. So they immediately make it apparent that, like, whenever shit's going down, they're like, "Where's Gojo?" He's like, oh, yes. "I don't know. He's away on business." So Which I do. I'm a little suspect of that, but I'll. I don't know. Yeah. I'm a little suspect of that that idea that you are the strongest, but then a lot of times when shit is going ab- actually south, you're you're just kind of like, yeah, not there. They, they're always making sure he's away from yes. where the story's happening, uh, and then he shows up at the end or whatever. Uh, but secondly, um, I mean, they introduce the strongest demon too. They did introduce the strongest. So you have the strongest Jujutsu Sorcerer and you have the strongest curse, both in episode one. Yeah. Oh, I remember the second point. The second point was you, we already see a plot being put in place where the main villains are like, we can't beat him. We have to seal him. Yes. And so it's blatant that that's what they plan to do because literally, I can't believe this because they keep saying it. So I guess we just have to take it at like their face value. But literally, he can't be beat by any of these curses. Like, <laughs> Which is nah, so weird can't. to me. The curses curse. themselves are admitting it. They're like, we can't fuck. Yes. Like, the one told him, if you try to fight him, you will die. And the like, one guy tried to meeting. fight him, and he came back with just a head. Yeah, it's it's kind of absurd. So I will say this, though. As cool as it is that we do get the end game from the start, you get the strongest user sorcerer, and you get the strongest curse, episodes one and two, right? You even get to see them fight a little bit, and you get to see more from Gojo. You even get to see more from Sukuna. I do have a slight issue with having... Uh, Gojo in the show, and he, I, I'm assuming that he's going to go eventually, but he needs to go soon. It's the same exact issue I have with Baruto. I feel like with Naruto and Sasuke, adult Naruto and Sasuke, let me be specific, with those two characters being in Baruto, you cannot take any other ninja seriously. I don't yeah. care how powerful the, the, the ninja is. Yes, there. there are no stakes. Whenever you see a fight, and you know that Naruto and Sasuke are either nearby or they could be nearby in an instant because teleportation is a thing. And yeah, and realistically, nobody can convince me that Naruto doesn't have a shadow clone on every edge of the continent. Yes. Like, there's probably a Naruto shadow clone in, in every city. Yes. It's like In every major city, out. I would imagine that there's a Naruto. But it's just, when I'm thinking about Baruto and what's the, the problem with Baruto, it's really that Naruto and Sasuke exist. And what they had to do in order to get through that is create space ninjas that really fucking suck and no one's interested in them at all. They're really just not interesting characters. It they're I hate Naruto in space. I hate that whole concept. Naruto was a very grounded anime, and now all of a sudden it's become fucking space. And I, it's just it's corny. There's no more human drama. The drama is all with these aliens that are outrageously powerful because they have to be. And the reason they have to be that outrageously powerful is because Naruto and Sasuke are are outrageously powerful. Yeah. So until you deal with Naruto and Sasuke, you can never have human drama, right? Because they can beat every human easily. There's no human that can beat either one of them. No. Um, there's, like we there's we know human. all the other Kages. Like, yes. Like before Naruto, the other Kages were a mystery, and they all had their own clout. Whereas now the other Kages, like they're cool, but we watch those Kages grow up, and we also watch like they're not. Naruto. Yeah. You also have to see the Kages fight Momoshiki, and they all just got bodied. Yeah, so uh, and Naruto and Sasuke body Momoshiki. So it's uh it's really hard to take any of the other humans seriously, which then you just lose a lot of the drama of Naruto, right? You lose so much of the good part of Naruto, which is the conflict that's happening on the earth level. Like, why yeah. are we in space with it with ninjas? It just kind of got out of hand. And so getting back to Jujutsu Kaisen, I feel like as long as Gojo is around, I can't take any of the curses seriously. Like when they were fighting the plant guy. I knew Gojo was nearby. And yeah. like they even show him lurking around. They put it first of all, they had to put a barrier up for just they had Gojo. to put a barrier up for just that him. only he can't get into. Yep. And so I'm thinking they were like looking at the barrier trying to figure out what it did. 
and then it was revealed it's like all this barrier does is it stop this one person it's like, literally meant it for one person i'm just like okay this character's problematic as fuck for the story like he's he's literally naruto at full power walking around at all times on go and until he's dealt with i just feel like i i'm gonna have a hard time even like the villain they established that i really like mahito uh, Mahito, or however you want to say it, yeah, something like that. I really, really like that that curse because it's a human curse, so it looks like a human, and it's also a newborn, so it looks very like. Yeah, cool. he's supposed to be the curse of like the humans' hatred for their for ourselves, like humans' hatred for humans. I think, yeah. but he looks like a human too, which is cool. Yeah, it's like stitched together human, kind of like Shigaraki. Honestly, kind of has some Shigaraki. He gave me a lot of Shigaraki vibes. Yeah, also with hands. I guess that yep. also, like, yep. the idea of hand, like, My Hero Academia feels like a bit of an inspiration for this, even though I don't know, I don't know how close these two things were written. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Mahito is really cool and seems pretty powerful. He's getting stronger, which I do like them building up this other villain besides Sakuna that can, like, touch people's souls and things like that. And, yeah, and change the shape of your soul. Guy. Yes, his domain expansion, which. But, we, could, we could talk God. about that too but yeah i really like them building up this other villain but until gojo's dealt with i can't take mahito seriously either i mean yeah the, none of them even even that the guy who i'm assuming the guy who's like leading the curses who i'm assuming is part of the jujutsu kaisen sorcerers like, yeah same as far as i can tell he is a traitor yes um although we don't really have much information on him because he's a human right that's the first thing is that as far as we know, he's, he's not a curse. I don't think yeah. he's. I think he's just straight up a I'm, human. I'm fairly certain he's a human. So, yeah. and he know he has information on Gojo. He has information on the setup of the JJK yep. like compound. So, as far as I know, he's a traitor. Um, he's a human. But anyway, he makes it clear that they can't beat Gojo. So, like nobody on the villain team at the moment <laughs> can fuck with Gojo. They're like, yeah. no, we have to seal him. It's a very strange way. And you know what? It is different, though. I've never seen something like this before. I've never seen a blatant good character, like a character on the good side, be so much stronger than anyone on the bad side where the bad side knows they can't win. Yeah, even to the point where I've heard theories of people saying Gojo's evil, which I don't that's think what, is true. So I so I thought that at first, but I'm realizing that's not the case at all. Like, he's actually yeah. not. I, don't, I do not think he's evil. But I've heard people argue... That Gojo is secretly evil. Well, you would have to think so after a while because, and I used to be suspicious of him because of this too. Like I said, I had suspicions of him being out all the time on on these quote unquote missions and things like that. I thought, yeah. oh God, we're 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 looking at another Eisen. This yeah, is Eisen yeah, yeah. part two. He's <laughs> he's going to take off the blindfold. He's going to look complete. He's going to slick his hair back, and he's going to start talking about Hokiyokos and shit. Oh, I was getting no. very Eisen vibes from Gojo. If and they hit me with that twist, I legit I'd be. Because I don't think he's evil. I don't feel it from him at all. Nah. Uh, which is good. I don't think that it serves the show well for him to be evil. Because if he is, literally no one can deal with him. So then you already write yourself from the beginning into a bad storyline. Because we already know with Aizen and Madara, both of them had to die. Or not even die. But both of them have to be sealed. And the dumbest, the kind of, it's kind of stupid. Yeah. Kaguya comes out and deals with Madara. And it's the shittiest ending to Madara. And then Aizen gets fucking sealed by some low-level keto spell that Orihara put on him when he let his guard down 50 episodes beforehand. Yeah, it's so, interesting. I wonder what the ending of JJK would be. I'm mean, Obviously, there's probably a lot of info in the manga, whatever, but, like, is the ending fucking Gojo versus, you know, Itadori with full Sakuna, or the Sakuna gets separated from Itadori? Right. You know what I mean? Like, how... I wonder what the author has planned for how Yeah, because go. right now, no curse is even close to being strong, so... Ultimately, you have to think they kind of set us up for the end game episode one because it does start off with uh, the execution of either yeah. Itadori. I think is about to happen, but then it kind of it's Itadori. another sort of bleach similarity. They put Itadori in the position of Rukia. Kind yep. Of. Yeah, and they're like, "You're gonna die." So we have to assume at some point he's probably gonna get all the fingers or whatever, and Sukuna is gonna be at full power. But what is the end game there? Like, I'm not watching this show expecting that the main character literally is going to be killed by Kojo at some point like i don't think that's actually going to happen although it's kind of funny because the main character has already died and yeah. i i want to talk about some of the things i don't like about jujitsu kaisen okay so it's very cliche i have a big problem with these animes that come out now where the main character just has the strongest hacks built into them already this has happened so many times like black clover 
He has a fucking actual demon inside of him that's anti magic. It's just OP as hell. Yeah, fucking ask the. They're like, oh, you don't have any magic, and it's like it's not even that he doesn't have magic; it's that he has a demon that negates magic that yes. lives in him. All magic is negated by his fucking. So he degree. just negates he magic. <laughs> yes, he's anti magic, which is broken as hell in that world. It's insanely broken. Also, Naruto being you know essentially given a QB at birth, uh, Ichigo having the hollow inside of him that is a vaste lorde whatever and super strong, and whenever he dies. Or loses a fight, it comes out. Whenever Naruto dies or loses a fight, the QB comes out. You know, it's we've seen this. That's another thing times. in terms of stakes with Itadori. It's like it's hard. In, in addition to Gojo harming the stakes, it's hard to fully be worried when we know that at any moment Sakuna could just come out. And now, we can yeah, talk about this. This has actually happened in the anime. They yeah. go against a special grade. Their first special grade is insanely strong, or so we think. It's insanely strong. And Itadori's hand gets blown off. He fucking loses an entire hand against this demon. The other characters are about to be killed from it too. The demon is ridiculously strong for these first year students. Like these students are newbies and they're fighting something that they just should not be. And then Sukuna comes out and the demon literally runs or tries to run. <laughs> and it gets bodied. So like you said, the stakes are bad on both ends. It's like I can't take the curses seriously because Gojo might be around. But also can't even take them seriously when Gojo's not around because the main character has the strongest curse inside of him and it comes yeah. out whenever he's in trouble. <laughs> the main character has Gojo Part 2 inside him. Yes. Like <laughs> it beat the shit out of that curse. I was like, holy hell. And then, so then it decides, all right, I'm tired of uh, switching with you. I'm just going to put a hole in your chest and kill you. So that way, if you switch back to yourself, you just die. So he does that. The main character actually dies like episode six or seven, really early, super early. And it's too, for me, Watching anime and seeing the main character die that early, just come on. I can't, I'm not connected to the character yet. And it was awkward when the other students were supposed to mourn uh, Yuji's death. I just thought it was strange because. So that's something, I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but that's something that it took me, um, it took me a moment to get what happened there. And this is, some would say to the benefit of JJK, I think it's a small detriment. They very quickly gloss over time. So what's not clear is in between those episodes is a, is a time skip, basically. Not like a three-year time skip, but a like a couple months or a couple weeks time skip. Basically, these three people were doing things together and taking out smaller curses over a period of time. And then it but it just cut all that out because it's not deemed important to the story. And it got it gets to the next major plot point. And they do that often in JJK where they'll cut out things that happen between characters yeah but aren't relevant to, to get to the next plot point and that's something that was awkward because like you it's like it's hard for me to feel connected to either story and it's hard for me to understand why his friends are mourning for him it's been six episodes he's dead yeah be, but what happened was they actually spent a bunch of time together yeah we just didn't see it and I, yeah it's and that's it's bad to me then that's just pacing. very pacing it's not shown very clearly i don't think yeah i just think it's too fast to kill to kill the main character and then so when he dies there's no fucking way we think that we're watching an anime where the main character died that fast in a shonen and they're not coming back. So you, I can't, I couldn't take that seriously at all. When he yeah. died and he was on the ground, we also knew the demon was already like, I like we knew the demon was there. Like I knew he wasn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when he's on the table to be dissected, I'm looking at them like you, you guys can't. Gojo was all sad, and I'm like, you guys can't be serious. He's gonna come <laughs> back. It's it, it's literally episode six. And there's 25 yeah. episodes in a season. He knew that from the beginning that it was this uh, this anime was going to go. They set up a pretty funny gag with it, though, where they were, like, getting hyped. Like, oh, they're going to be so happy when they see me again. Yeah. And, like, Gojo brings him out in a box. Yeah. And everybody's just like, fuck you. I do like how he also hid him after he died. Yeah. So how are you just going to be back alive and not tell everybody immediately? How are you just going to be like, you know what? Actually, I'm going to take this time to train you, and then I'm going to bring you back to the people. Yeah, it created a kind of a funny slash cool plot point. But yeah. the setup for it was just like, I don't know. I just thought it was too fast. I I stand by that. I also think that killing the main character that soon makes me think that he's not going to die at any point soon either. So every fight he gets into from here on out, I'm never going to look at him as somebody who might actually die. I'm just putting that out there right now. I'm never yeah. going to feel like the main character's in danger from here on out until we're like close to end the series. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I would have felt that anyway just because he has the QB inside him. So. That's also true. He has the QB, and even if Gojo gets sealed, which... 
you know, I'm interested to see what's going to happen if they're even able to seal him. Yeah. But even if Gojo gets sealed, like, it'll be drama. It'll make things tougher. Things will get dark. But ultimately... It, it, it reminds me of uh, Game of Thrones. So when Jon Snow got killed in Game of Thrones, right? Yeah. He gets killed in the end of season five. And season six, episode two, Jon Snow is resurrected. Pretty cool. I knew once he came back that he was never going to die again. Yeah, no. Be- yeah. So when yeah. you're watching the last season and it's the, the long night, and the dragon is blowing that blue fire at him, and he's trying to get to the Night King, and I, and that whole bit. He even has a moment where he blatantly squares off against the Night King. They're walking yep. towards each other. I knew at no point, even when the Night King raised his arms and brought all those dead people back around Jon Snow, and the odds are completely stacked against him, at no point did I think, holy shit, Jon Snow's going to die. At no point, because I was yeah, like, they brought really? him back for a reason. And they brought him back two seasons before this. Like, it's not even that long yeah. ago. And to, and to be more clear... Because season seven and eight are so short, two seasons ago was actually like I'm only talking about like eight, eight up, eight or nine episodes ago. <laughs> like he wasn't, he wasn't dead that long. So it's just kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of ridiculous. Like he died, and then if you think about it, there was a year in between because of how seasons work with HBO shows. But there was only two episodes. So people who watch Game of Thrones straight through, like when Gary watched it, our friend Gary, he watched Game of Thrones straight through. He watches. Jon Snow gets stabbed up, and then two episodes later, Jon Snow's back to life. And I said, this doesn't really work that well without that year gap in between yeah no that's true because i know around when that happened there was a lot of talk because as far as i know john snow novels? isn't would you would you say i was say you're gonna bring up the novels yeah as far as i know he's not resurrected in the novels yet either i don't know book has come out well the last so, thing that happened in the book is him dying so yeah he's not yeah so that's what people i remember everybody talking about like you know because that was a big idea they're like a lot of people thought that in the yes. next book john snow yes. was going to come back so and it was a, lot a of huge mystery. talk and um, excitement behind it for that for that year um and then when it happened it was like oh shit like this is going to be in the next book that's never coming out um so but yeah with Jujutsu Kaisen the main character dies and now I'm already thinking they've already used what could have been a more dramatic death just super quick so now you have to kill one of the side characters I guess to have some real emotion so I will say on that note though on I'm about well, to agree with what you're. I already know where you're going with this. Wait, no, I don't think you because I was slightly. Go ahead, say what you want to say because I think I'm gonna. No. I'm slightly off. All right. So on on one hand, I'm saying one of the side characters has to die, right? Mm-hmm. But one of the things I really fucking love about Jujutsu Kaisen, and this is one of the things I have listed as things it does well, the one guy Junpei or whatever his name was. Oh, the kid. Yes, who yeah. his mom was killed by Mahito. His mom was and, bad too. Sorry yes, about. randomly. But uh, Mahito, I'm pretty sure, or like Curses killed his mom because she ended up with one of Sukuna's fingers. And then he gets she didn't, Hold up. Hold up. She did not end up with one of his fingers, okay? That shit was planted there. Okay. But fucking, right. That shit was planted. Blatantly. It was planted there. And she gets killed. He, he falls into even more despair because he's a bully kid. Standard, I want to kill everybody. So he finds a curse. The curse takes interest in him to pretty he's much get close to. On his forehead. That shit was fucked up. Yes. The curse takes interest in him. Mahito takes interest in him to get close to Gojo and get close to Sukuna and you like Yuji. And there's even a fucking opening to Jujutsu Kaisen that shows this character in the school uniform as a Jujutsu sorcerer. And then he fucking dies. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like the biggest, well, that was a fucking lie. <laughs> like it's that fucking uh Tyler, Tyler the Creator meme where it's like, well, that was a fucking lie. Like it's literally insane to me. <laughs> that they killed this guy after showing him in an opening with the school uniform one, which yeah. I actually love that they did that because I hate I hate anime openings, by the way. I think they're annoying because they're spoilers, and I never watch them until the end. Yeah, they have but, so many spoilers. I don't like, know. I do not like watching anime openings. I hate it's not it a fresh that they had a fake spoiler, though. Yes, which I thought was cool. I thought it was a spoiler to seeing him as a jujitsu sorcerer, but that never actually happens. I just think that's, <laughs> that's like one of the biggest gags ever, and maybe that's what needs to start happening with anime openings. Anime openings need to be it needs to be normalized that they're not canon. How about that? Yeah, there, there's... I, I'm not even going to say what it is. On the off chance that I get any of you beautiful people to watch One Piece, but there is an anime opening for One Piece. It's in the Arabasta arc. Just don't watch it, okay? Just don't watch the opening. Is that bad? It's, it's one of the worst spoilers ever. Like, I don't think... so ridiculous. I don't think there's a spoiler worse than Hunter Hunter Chimera Ant's arc opening. I do not... I cannot imagine an arc worse than that opening because they literally show you Meruem. They show you Meruem. 
I think I think this one's worse. You really think? Okay, I have to watch it after after we done this, this podcast. One's worse. <laughs> I don't remember. There's two things I need to see. There's the Toto and Yuji versus Hanami fight, but with the Full Metal characters over it, and I also need to see what you just said about uh about one. I'm going to say this without spoilers, but it, it, this even might be too much for you people at home. So listen, One Piece spoilers, but I'm not actually going to say anything. Fraser, what essentially happens in this Arabasta opening is a person that is a villain in Arabasta oh, is God, shown I I in the opening I know. as a crew member. Yep, I know. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. That's so bad. It's shown. Yes, I know exactly who you're talking about. They are just shown like happy-go-lucky with the homies. It's like, what the fuck is happening? Okay, that one's bad, Kenny. <laughs> I'm just trying to think if it's worse than the biggest villain in <laughs> all of Hunter Hunter right now being revealed when the entire arc is building up to him being born. Yeah, yeah. Like the entire arc. So it's one thing that the character that you find out joins Luffy's crew starts off as evil in the arc or like a bad guy or whatever you want to call it. And then they switch over and they they spoil that. That's really bad. <laughs> but that arc wasn't necessarily about that character. Yeah, yeah. That whole arc is not about that character. That's true. But the entire Chimera Ant arc is about the king being born. It starts off with the queen eating and stuff like that <laughs> and being pregnant. And then every episode after that is essentially the king slowly being born and the royal guard being born. And they even show the royal guard too, right? They show all three of them, I think. In the opening, I think it. so. I think they show think them they, like standing think, on towers. Or yes, something. I think they show all three of the royal guard and Meruem at the end of the Chimera Ant, Ant arc opening which is so wild to me because that arc is insanely long too so it's a while before you actually see the royal guard at Meruem, but you i mean you see them in the opening from the first episode which is just i just think that's the most egregious shit i've ever seen in my life and what would happen to me when i watched hunter hunter and this really sucked i would skip the opening but sometimes i wouldn't skip far enough i would skip right to the end so it would just be that screen of Meruem and the three royal guards and all these other chimera ants it would just like i was I, so i basically saw him before i saw him yeah, yeah. Yeah, anime openings are fucking annoying, man. They they just show too much. I need Crunchyroll and Funimation when they do create their app or whatever they're deciding to do. There needs to be a really perfectly done skip opening. Netflix does it. Netflix does it great. Netflix is on another level, honestly, when it comes to like this shit. Because yeah. they have the skip opening and they have skip ending. And they usually have it done where because some anime episodes, you know, there's something after the ending. Yeah. So if there's a scene after the ending, I've noticed with a lot of anime on Netflix, the skip ending prompt won't pop up. If they if there's a scene after, it's like they are they already have it set up. Um, so if there's something important, they won't let you skip the ending or whatever. And same thing with the openings, like they have a skip opening thing on Netflix, and I don't yeah. understand how Crunchyroll, a dedicated anime thing, doesn't have yes these adjustments. And I need it to be done well. And what I mean by that is when you do click it, it doesn't show you the last part of the opening because yep. that just ruins me if I'm watching Hunter Hunter because you're gonna see Marrowin. But if you're um if you do it right, it's the first scene of the actual episode that's not the opening. Like I need it to be I need it to be done well. Because I've seen and the reason why I'm even saying that I've seen skip openings that shoot to the last shot of the opening. And I'm like God yeah, yeah that's not this like that's not skipping the opening. I still saw it. I still saw some of the opening. Last right. shot, it's just like a guy dead with a hole in his chest. So, what do you think about the power scaling in Jujutsu Kaisen? Like, where do you think they are? I can't. I'm trying to think about how I want to place so, them because only one character is outrageous right now. Well, before the full on power scaling, I want to also say because this has to do with the in universe power scaling. Yeah, this is both depending on how it goes. This will be a benefit or a deficit. I don't think I used those words correctly there, but this will be a pro and a con to JJK's writing and power scaling. So on the Gojo and um, and the demons, they make it clear really early on that... So first of all, we all talked about how they want to seal Gojo, and he's really strong. I think the writer, although at the moment, nothing has happened substantially to make me think JJK is going to be the greatest thing ever. I do see some hints of competence in the writer, and the writer seems to know what he's doing and enjoy what he's doing. And... They make it clear early on, they introduce like the power scaling of the demons or the curses, right? And they're like grade one, grade two, et cetera, and yes. special grade. And even with the students, they have like a power level type of yes. thing going on. But then Gojo says like, there's a part where there's an, there, every episode is a special grade curse. And Gojo says, hey, the reason why you guys are called special grades is you're supposed to be special. If you keep showing up like this, you're not going to be special anymore. <laughs> so the fact that the anime itself yes. says that 
Because it, it really is like they tell you all this grading system and they just go every fucking episode is yeah. a new special grade. Monster review. of the week, how you always talk about. But it's monster of week of all top tier monsters, allegedly. Yeah. Yeah, and Gojo yeah. even says, like, hey, man, you guys aren't all that special if you keep showing up like yeah, this. Yeah, we have to downgrade that category. That's not a thing anymore. And so my point is, I think that shows a potential competence in the writer that he does have a plan and he knows where he's going. Yeah. And it makes me somewhat excited for where that might go. Because at because if that line wasn't there, I would have a direct complaint saying, what the fuck is so special about these guys? But the fact that that line is included makes me say, okay, the writer knows yeah. that he's, he no, did that's, something that's real. and went, went against it. So... Um, I, I am interested to see where it goes because our main characters are progressing very quickly. Like they're dealing with special grades. You know, like they're, they're yeah, like, they're they are progressing rather quickly. It's um, it, you mentioned in episode two or one or just very early on, they deal with a Sakuna clone, a Sakuna finger demon that they cannot deal with. Yeah. The last episode, the last three episodes of the series, they beat that same demon. Yeah. At the end of the twenty-four episodes, so they're progressing fucking quick. They're progressing really fast and. I even want to say this. I thought it was kind of bad when the guy, Nanami, he's like the accountant type of guy. Yeah. Uh, I really like his character. I, I like have him too. I like because he's just like an old head and he's just like, you guys don't know what it is. He's like, getting old means you wake up and you see hairs on your pillow. It's like, oh no, yeah. male pattern. Bumps. He's cool as shit to me. He's so I calm. I like him a lot. His power is he, cool too. He's so calm and calculated. I like his overtime ability. Uh, I like that he uses that that like blade weapon. I like the way he fights. I like his confidence. Also, like when he's not confident anymore, he's like, "All right, it's time to go." Because when he fight, when he fought M- M- Mahito, he yep. like, like, "All right, enough is enough." At this point, like, I'm out. I really like his character. I like what he is for the main character as well. How he's like a he's a weaker version of Gojo, but he's telling him things that Gojo hasn't really imparted on him, like the the smaller stuff. But you still need to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I didn't like was the special thing that you do where you line up your curse energy at the exact same time as your attack, a black flash. Yeah, black flash, yep. So Nanami holds the record for the most consecutive black flashes, which I think yeah, was, it was three. Four. Three think, oh, it was four? I think it's four. Okay. It's yeah. So it's a it's three or four consecutive is the most that anyone has ever been able to do. And the main character, like essentially the first time he does one, just does like seven. <laughs> Yeah, he just does like three more consecutively. So he ties or beats the record immediately. Yeah. And I get that from episode one, Yuji is a prodigy for humans. But like, at what point does is he not good at something? Yeah, he he fucking at what point he explodes exponentially. And like, like you could argue like he's had all these teachers because he had Gojo, he had Hanami, Nanami, and then yeah. he has um, Toto, who's like essentially training him. Yeah, Toto well. is training him for sure. He's definitely training him. But uh. uh I just, yeah. I guess my question really is, how long is, is Jujutsu Kaisen going to go with the main character getting this strong this fast? That's my question. Because right now, it seems like this is going to be a short story. I know Demon Slayer is actually already over. I do not know the ending because I didn't read the manga and no one has spoiled it for me. Please don't. But I feel like Jujutsu Kaisen isn't going to last long the way the pacing is right now. It's paced so fast as though the ending is coming really quick. Here's the thing, though. And this is potentially scary. This is potentially like if it's paced fast and it's not that bad, but if it's paced long, it's bad. It's the same thing. It's the same problem Ichigo had. Like, why was he why was he tying with Zaraki Kampachi? Yes. Like Ichigo early. should not have fucking fought Kampachi to a draw. No. And he really shouldn't have beat Byakia either. No. <laughs> the hollow I know the hollow came out and fucked Byakia up real bad, but making him beat a character like Byakia in episode sixty is a little wild. It would be like the main character beating Nanami yeah, real soon. Like, like It would be crazy to me, him beating him already. This is a teacher. He's an instructor. What the fuck? Yep. You're not supposed to be able to beat me already. Yeah, um, I like, side note, I'll get to that. Fuck it. Just back on the power scaling. Yeah, so I think it's insane to me, speaking of power scaling, because I don't know where to put this anime in terms of power scaling between the other animes. I, like, I always use Naruto as a base, a baseline. Like, here's a baseline. And then above Naruto is always going to be like Dragon Ball Z. I have Bleach above Naruto. Uh, probably One Piece characters too, honestly, when I think about it, above Naruto. And then I have like things below it or whatever. I think, I think the general... Okay, so I think JJ Gate... J, I think Naruto is a good line. I think JJ K's cast in general is probably about Naruto level for the, like... They would fit Whoa. into the cast of Naruto. But yes. Gojo 
is upper Naruto level. Gojo was end of series Naruto. Yeah, because like for sure, Madara, Sasuke, Gojo, Gojo flies, Naruto, all of those Gojo characters teleports. are seven years beyond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ito and fucking yes. everybody else. You know what I mean? So, so my point in this is, I'm just gonna come out and say it, but fucking boogie woogie, boogie woogie. I that ability, him. Sasuke has that same ability. Boogie the only problem woogie. is in Naruto, when Sasuke does fucking boogie woogie, it costs him so much chakra. I almost want to say it's like a third. It, it takes up an immense amount of chakra from to use his the name of it is super long in Japanese, so I'm not even going to attempt to say it. Yeah, but that yeah. technique that Sasuke has where he can switch uh places with an object, yep. It it takes an immense amount of chakra. He talks about it all the time when he uses it, how much chakra it takes, and then boogie woogie is just spammable. It's mad spammable. So it this is so spammable. I, I was going to talk about this, but then I stopped. First of all, Toto is so fucking top tier. Yes. I'm just going to quick interject. Second favorite character, maybe favorite character. The top, like, it's Gojo and Toto for me in terms of, like, my favorite characters in JJK. Like, it's yeah. not even close. Like, it's Gojo, Toto, and then probably Nanami, and then, I don't know, everybody else. I, I like Maki, too. The girl that actually can't see curses and she needs the glasses. I like yes. Maki, cool. Um, what weapon does she use? I forget. She uses a bunch of weapons. She mainly uses a Naginata, which is that's like, the one that breaks apart. Oh no, that's um, that's um, uh, a section staff. I think it's called. It's oh, basically yeah, yeah. like a like a bow staff, but you can break it into three yeah. parts. I forget what it's called. What's exactly. the name of that game where the main character uses that? Uh, not, I was going to say Sudoku, but that's the game of numbers. Sweet What's it called? Uses it in uh, uh, Goku uses it in Sayuki. If you ever seen Sayuki? Okay, I have Goku. seen Sayuki. I actually love Sayuki. He uses a three section staff yeah. as well. But you said she uses a lot of different weapons. Yeah, yeah. Because I think I think at first you see her using Naginata, which is essentially essentially a spear, but not not really a spear. Uh -huh. Um, it's like a halberd. Uh, but yeah, she uses a couple because she and she's she's the girl that when that other character she's fighting against another girl who had a sword and she's fucking took her sword. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that shit was so funny to me. Yeah, because she apparently doesn't really have any curse energy or any um, adeptness with curse energy. She can't see curses. She has to use those glasses to see curses. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then her family, like cat, like her family's super sexist and shit. And, yes. Uh, okay, it's coming back to me now. I haven't. So just to be transparent here, I haven't seen Jujutsu Kaisen since it first aired and stopped, which is now months ago. Uh, and I got Kenny to watch it like a couple of weeks recently. ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty recently. So I am a little blurry on some of the uh, side characters, but yeah. I do know who you're talking about now. I, I'm thinking about the way she wears her hair, her uniform, and I just remember her getting into that little. She got to a little spat with that girl with the sword in the exchange event, and I thought the girl with the sword <laughs> was going to be really cool because she did something where she said, "Cross this line, and you'll you, like you'll be in my eight trigrams, basically." Yeah, yeah. Did. And the girl just fucking threw the the one part of the staff at her. She's like, damn, I didn't expect her to do that. And then she, <laughs> she beat her so quick and took her she sword her ass, and walked yeah. away. That shit was um, dope. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, um, I love Toto. He's probably my second favorite character. He's legit. His ability, Boogie Woogie, is crazy. And I want to talk about something they talk they say in JJK. They they because anime loves like saying the name of their technique and explaining their technique, which yeah. usually is so stupid, right? But then they make the claim in JJK that explaining your curse technique makes it stronger, which it's a little dumb, but whatever. Yeah, it is. But explaining your technique makes it stronger, which I think maybe means that it makes it actually stronger. But the boogie woogie thing made me think that that's not what it means. I could be wrong. Maybe it just actually makes your technique stronger. But something that I like that um, Toto did, which I thought was very, very smart and clever, he explained his technique to the plant demon, to, uh, Hanami. Hanami. They, do they have the same name, Nanami and Hanami? Anyway. I mean, it was, it's close, but it, there's an N in the front and there's an H in the front of the other yeah. one. Yeah, but uh, he explains his technique to her. He says, like, I can clap my hands and switch places with somebody, right? Anything then, that has, I believe it's anything that has cursed energy. Yeah, but and, at first he just says, like, I can clap my hands and switch my places with, like, another person. Yeah. And as she starts to figure it out, he changes it and he switches <laughs> it to, like, make it something different. Yeah. Because when he first uses it, they don't know he, he has it. And he fakes like he got caught in a trap and he gets thrown into a bunch of spikes. And right before he gets thrown into the spikes, he claps his hands, the screen turns white, and then Hanami is in the spikes. Yep. And then he explains his technique. And then it's like, I can switch places with something else. Then as soon as she's catching on to it, he claps his hand and doesn't activate his power. So he goes to react to the switch, but then the switch doesn't happen. Yep. And then she gets caught. 
And so the fact that he explained this technique made his technique stronger, not because it actually made it stronger, but because it played a mind game. Yes, that's and actually broken. And one of the cool parts about that fight is he also doesn't explain that he can switch places between two other people who are not him at all. Other people, yeah, because then when she it doesn't even have again, to, yeah, she learns he more. His hands again, and then he switches people that aren't him, and then she's yes. like, "What the fuck?" So now every time I go to clap, oh, several several scenarios can happen now. I can switch places with you. I can switch places with Yuji. I can have you and Yuji switch places or nothing. Or nothing. And the fact that he explained how his power works made his power stronger, not because it made it stronger, but because it added so many layers to the mind game. And yep. I thought that was very... It actually cool. fucking overwhelmed the, <laughs> the, plant, the plant curse. Yes, uh, very sick. Even when she was trying to adapt, he just kept turning up. I actually like that Toto was really strong. I think they say he's the strongest student, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's they, very clear. They, so strong to the point where the, some students don't even know he has a curse power because um, Mag Megumi, Megami, I don't know, yeah, the boy. Megami, uh, with, the, with the shadow technique yeah, thing. Sasuke. So, yes, he, yeah, kill a little um, Sasuke character. The Sasuke of the, of the series. And when he talks to Toto, he asks, he says, is it true that you don't have a curse technique? And he says, no, I do, but I only use it. I only use it on special grades or something like that. Like, Everything below a special grade isn't worth. He just him beats using things. His he's just he just strong. Beats its ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, he's just strong, which is so, wild. Yeah, Toto is OD. He so yeah. What you were saying in terms of power scaling, he just can spam boogie woogie, and it can do a ton of shit, and it's really fucking. And he doesn't really take damage. He's durable. He's been hit by the main character a couple times. He's been hit by pretty much like you know the curse. He's very strong. Also, I do like because they play him up. I, I think he's a pretty. He's one of my favorite characters in the show. He's written well. He's played like a really strong, really dumb character. And that's what I thought he was. He's extremely smart. I like, thought he part, was dumb. The part where she shoots all the little chakra eating bullets at him, the chakra eating plants, yep. and he goes to defend it and he puts his, his curse energy up. And then in a split moment, he realizes, he thinks of everything that happens. Then he goes, oh, if I like these things will kill me if I put. And then he he completely puts his chakra down. Yep. Like in a split moment, he and he really did think of all that. Like it wasn't yep. just instinct. Like he he even smart. he even boasts about his own IQ. Yeah, he does. It's like fifty three thousand or some crazy. Yeah, shit. he's he says insane numbers. I don't know if he's trolling or not, but he comes off as a big strong doofus. And when you actually see him fight, you realize he's actually pretty fucking smart and fast. Like also, really fast. I love like they're when they be when they went in sync. And it was just like my best of friend, though. <laughs> and yeah. like, and then it evolved to like my brother. And just, I really liked when they great. were both in the air. So yes, they were I know. skating. Oh. Yo, the animation, everything. And I know we already talked about animation a lot, but the one part where they're fighting against Hanami, and they're in the air, high as shit, and mm -hmm. they're about to tag team attack the fucking gods at that moment. Hanami just makes the, all the plants disappear. And they're falling. Going. And I love that gag because I didn't see that shit coming at all. I was like, oh, God, they're fucking this plant up. Like, they're just ruining <laughs> this thing. And when that happens, I was like, what are they supposed to do now? They're falling from such a high place. They're not durable enough to survive that kind of fall. And at the same time, Hanami starts shooting down, like, an actual attack at them. And the way yep. they dodge about kicking off of each other, I just yes. thought that was so... They go, they, like, put their feet on each other and, like, my best of friend. Because even Hanami was fucking... like, you can't really defend in the air like that. Like, yeah. you, can't dodge, you can't dodge my attack now. And you also didn't know that the way my cursed ability works, where I can make the plants non-existent in an instant. Yeah. Like, they just disappeared. They just fucking... What's, they, what's they crazy, didn't though, retract. it's at that point, Boogie Woogie wasn't revealed yet. At any point, he could have boogie woogie. Yes, he I thought about that too. Like he could have boogie woogie at any moment. But he was he was holding it back. That, yeah, he he's smart. He's he's legit. I think he's really fucking strong, and yes. I think he he probably scales. Obviously, he's not he's not touching Gojo, but yeah. I think he scales really high as well. Yeah, I think that the ability to clap and do Sasuke's strongest technique is a bit wild. Uh, yeah, and that and that, and have the power to back it up. Like it's not like that's all he is. Yes, he's got legit skill behind us. Yes. So he's he scales really high. He's a really cool character. I like the cursed speech user too. I just found him interesting. Yeah, he's just like, that ability you know, that he cannot speak in anything but uh, what is it? Recipes for it's not sushi, is it? It's uh, I think it's like recipes for like rice balls or onigiri or whatever. Yeah. So the cursed speech user, I'm gonna look up his name. Yeah, I think he can. He he only speaks in like ingredients to onigiri or rice balls or something like that because anything he says. 
like happens. Like he can, and I don't, I'm guessing he doesn't really have control over it. And so that can also put him in danger because if he says a command that's too strong or too dangerous, it can backfire on him. And yes. we've seen that happen. His name is Toge Inumaki. So I just, I find him to be really cool. Yeah. Like he, when we first saw Toto, all the stuff's happening that he, he unzips his, his collar and he says, stop. And if Toto completely comes to a complete stop, then he can't do anything. So I'm going to read out what it says on the wiki. Curse speech is activated when a user utters words or commands aloud that are reinforced with curse energy. This action compels the listener to act or be acted upon as a command. For example, a curse speech user can command his opponent to stop moving or for them to be crushed. Their strength of the compulsion depends on the skill level of the user. I remember he told Toto to stop, didn't he? Yep. He said stop, and Toto just couldn't move. That shit scared the hell out of me. I was like, whoa, yeah. that guy is powerful as hell. And then when um when Hanami showed up and all that, like he was giving Hanami commands and you saw his voice back, box break and he started yeah, bleeding. Yeah, it has like finally, a like, he was able to force it out. He was like, blast away. And then yeah. she got like- That was really back. cool. I really like his ability. He seems to be one of the stronger ones. And his ability is so scary though that he doesn't like using it around his friends, essentially. Yeah, so he, he just can, says like- ingredients and stuff yeah he just has ingredients which at some point i do kind of want him to speak normal because he won't yeah that's kind of that kind of sucks then because it's this is a a trend that has happened within the last decade or so with anime and it just becomes more and more common uh characters have just quirks like characters just have really weird quirks that they just do so this guy he's going to talk in in sushi recipes because that's like his quirk that's like what makes the character funny right or, or whatever but it's really hard to connect to a character that doesn't say anything but nonsense or doesn't say anything at all and i brought this up in the demon slayer episode how nezuko doesn't speak ever yeah i think the only time she says anything is when she does her cursed blood you know whatever her blood technique and i don't even know if she actually is saying that or if that's an anime only thing where it's not really She's like thinking it or something yeah or they or they just kind of illustrate the you know they just put the name on the panel and the manga. yeah I don't know. I don't read the manga, but I don't know. If it maybe she didn't actually say it. Like I don't know if there's a chat bubble coming out of her mouth. Yeah, saying yeah, yeah. Her bloodline limit thingy. Uh, so him not speaking, Nezuko not speaking. It just makes it where, even though I like his ability, I don't really like the character too much. Like, I think he's cool, but yeah, I, it's hard to connect some, with him. At some point, I'm just going to be like, all right, like this guy yeah, is cool. Has cool power. Yeah, because it becomes really hard to connect with them. I mean, yeah. I'm sure at some point there might be like a backstory flashback thing. Yes. And then we'll, we'll be sad or something. You know something else I like about this anime that uh, it, every every shonen does this, but you start to imagine how certain characters' abilities will evolve. You know what's going to happen eventually. Yeah, yeah. The one chick who can create a bullet once per day. Yes. Uh, she can basically create things out of nothing, out of cursed energy. Which is wild. It's extremely overpowered, which is why she can only do it once, you know, every so often. You know that she's going to be able to create multiple bullets or whatever the fuck she wants. Yeah, one day she's going to have a fucking Gatling gun. Yes. And she's going to One one day she's going to fire all her shots. They're going to think that she fired even her extra shot. And then she's going to fire like 10 more extra shots. Yep. So we know that we know they're scaling that you can see the shadow guy. He already That's another, by the way, sorry, that's another good example of. This is why I don't know if what they said works the way they said it works. I don't know if them saying explaining your curse power actually means it gets stronger or if they mean psychologically. Because once again there, she made it a point to always show her opponent that she's reloading. She makes it clear she wants the people to know that she has to reload after six bullets or whatever. And the whole reason why she does that is so the extra shot is effective. If you always think she has to reload, if you always think she's reloading after six shots, it makes it so that if you count her shots, this you won't know a seventh shot is coming. Yeah. And that's a really smart aspect. It is it. cool, but is it really making a technique stronger or is it stronger because the person is fucking counting bullets and then they, you know, the, the count's yeah, always going to be off by one? Yeah, is it? Yeah, because that's what I think. I think it might be all psychological. I think we'll you were really able to strong. apply your logic to both Toto and her. So that's. Yeah really good already so that's i think it's more of like a psychological thing it's it's honestly what i hope it is because i think it'd be so much cooler than just like if i tell you the name of my technique it gets stronger because like that happens like getsuga tensho he does it but when he says getsuga tensho it's stronger right it's like whatever but yeah 
yeah, you can see power scaling. That's going to happen. Domain expansion is really cool. Bon Kai. It's yeah. It's it's a. But I like that it's it's different from anything that we've seen before. Really, you put yeah. So the way it's explained, you create like a realm. Yes, you create a small pocket dimension, literally, where your curse techniques are guaranteed to hit. Which the concept of that is wild to me. It sounds like some Pokemon shit. It sounds like some like. <laughs> it does sound like some Pokemon shit. Like oh, oh I used Rain Dance. Now Thunder's guaranteed to hit. Yeah, like it, it, it's very Pokemon esque to me. Like oh, I Dynamax, and now my attacks can't miss, and they have special effects. Like, Side note: Thunder is so good in Rain. It has a thirty percent chance of hitting through Protect. I don't think that's every gen, but one of the generations. Holy shit! In Rain, Thunder is not missable, and one generation I don't remember which one, Thunder would even have a 30% chance of hitting through Protect, which is wild. And then anyway. what's the percentage chance that Thunder pro, uh, paralyzes? 30%. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the domain expansion thing is just crazy, though. It uh, It's not quite Bankai. It's not quite like Sharingan or it's not quite Super Saiyan or anything like that. But it is very unique. It's very unique. You create a pocket dimension. Your attack is guaranteed to hit. And the only way to uh, get out of it is to either use your own domain expansion, but yours has to overpower theirs. So it can't just be like, yeah. oh, I activate mine after you, and yours just doesn't work now. It's like, you have to be have blatantly to be stronger power. than a person, I guess. I, I forget the other way. Uh, Gojo explained like the two ways to kind of get through domain I, expansion. Well, we saw Itadori just broke it from the outside. Yes, someone can come in from the outside. Yeah, the Nanami got caught in it, right? Yeah, he got caught in because uh, Mahito, he didn't, he sort of had a mid battle epiphany and learned how to use his domain expansion mid fight with Nanami and Itadori. Yeah, they were fucking him up bad. Yes, they were. But and oh then he God. did his domain. It looked so Nanami cool when he did that. And the hands started coming yeah, out of his hands mouth. Like, oh my God. Seeing the hands fold out on some Nico Robin shit. Yeah, the hands came out wild. I was like, yo, his. He got some cool. I like the way he can transform his body parts into sharp objects. He can make himself smaller or fatter depending on what he needs to be at the time. It's very he can cool. Grow wings, like he can do all kinds of shit. Yeah, it's very scary. His ability is a combination of Nico Robin and I don't know, some sharp objects. He can just go he can just go this is a blade now. He's pretty scary. He can do he can do some fucked up shit. I mean, he's cuz Nico Robin could do that too. Yes. I'm I'm scared of I've mentioned this earlier, but I'm scared of Nanami, the instructor, and his relationship with Maito because I feel like they're setting him up to be the first human turned into a curse that actually doesn't just die. Mm, yeah. At one point, Maito touches Nanami's soul, and well, he tries to like you know alter it basically, and then he realizes it and he stops it. I was really scared that that was what was going to happen. He was going to turn a jujitsu sorcerer into a curse. Yeah. Because I don't know if we've, we haven't seen that yet, right? That's like Not that I know of. Yeah, so if you turn one of the top instructors into a curse, I'm just thinking like, holy shit, he might end up being really powerful and obviously evil at that point. Yeah, that could be fucked up. It could create some conflict later on, and I foresee that happening because every time they meet, Mahito is so interested in him. Yeah, he's and for good reason. He keeps he keeps showing off. He keeps showing yes. off. His power is cool. I like the 7-3 thing. Yes. Where it's so weird. That's something that's kind of cool about JJK. I, I got to give it its credit is the powers are pretty unique. Yeah. They're completely like, different from one another, like completely different from one another and different from other shows, right? Like, yeah, that's it's true a unique power that his, his power is that fucking, he, he draws like an invisible line across a distance and then like he can cut one third of it or whatever. Like, and it's yeah. a guaranteed crit or some shit. Like, yeah. He, he has guaranteed crits. <laughs> He has to just cut in the right spot, and he has a guaranteed crit. Like, uh, it's and that's only one of his power. powers. He has that overtime ability too. Yeah, where overtime after literally like, a certain amount of time, he gets a buff, just a stat, a stat buff. He's like, I want to be home. Oh, sh- overtime. <laughs> and at first, it was like, oh, you're 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 trying to leave because you're weak. But it's like, no, I'm actually trying to leave to save your ass. Like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> I got like, time for this. Yeah, if I don't leave now, I'm gonna destroy you. He's a cool but, character too. I like he once again. It's an interesting character, and I think written pretty well. Where I like how he's just kind of done with life, like he's just like a done adult. He like, is. He's so done with life. He fucking. He's worked as an accountant for a while. Yeah, like he's just done with it. <laughs> he goes to the bagel shop or whatever. Yeah, and he's just he likes the lady at the shop. He's like she's a good good kid, and yep. it, it's just it's it feels really realistic. I think some of the characters in JJK are written pretty well. They're like um, like I like them. I like Toto. I like Nanami. I like Gojo. 
What about you, Megami? We haven't talked about him much, but the Shadow Curse. He seems user. he's a character that I enjoy him. I want to. I like him, but I'm not over the moon. Like he's Same. he's cool. He he's, cool. he's, he's, he's cool. like he's I think we both called like him the Sasuke to Killua. Yeah, but I don't I don't know enough about him yet to really to really say that. Yes. Yeah. He's interesting though because Sukuna took a liking to him very early on. Very quickly. Yeah. It's that's something that's cool is that. Sukuna doesn't even seemingly have any interest in Yuji. He's interested in Maguri. Yeah, he actually doesn't really fuck with Yuji like that at all. At times. all. Yeah. But he's really interested in in Megumi. He so. didn't kill him. He chose to not. He was like, "Oh, that's like, interesting. Oh, you, I want. Yeah, you got I, something cool." In the he world. said, "I want to see that. I want to see that." So he blatantly chose to, you know, not really go in on him. And that's an interesting concept already to think about. Why does Sukuna? have an interest in a human yeah he's he's a cool character i don't feel either like for example i like the girl more than him yeah no, uh, no, no Bara. yeah i like the girl more than him i think but my point is i like him jjk overall because we've said pros and cons i like it it's it was fun it was an easy watch i didn't have to struggle to watch it i watched it in a night and a half it was easy watch fun to watch it's just at the moment i know people put it people are saying it's like one of the best shonens they've seen it's up there it's super top tier at the moment, it's not there for me. I just think it's cool and it's good, and I can see potential of it going one way. But I can also just seeing it being cliche and whatever, like Black Clover, uh, with yes. better animation. So at the moment, that's where it is for me. At the moment, it's Black Clover with better animation. Yeah, uh, is Black, Black Clover, Clover I like, but it's not anywhere near my favorite. Yeah, I like Black Clover as well. Uh, not the beginning of it. I think everyone hates the beginning of Black Clover, but the where it got around. Episode like sixty something when he first released his sword from that the queen of the witches she like awakened yeah. him it got so different after that and then seeing Julius fight Black Clover I guess we can do an episode on Black Clover at some point but yeah for sure for it sure. definitely I definitely like Jujutsu Kaisen I don't know if I like it more than Black Clover just yet for me they're like even it's yes just JJK With only twenty four episodes out and I've seen a hundred episodes of Black Clover. I'm not going to put it over Black Clover just yet because they're both it, – it, 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 all the things that I don't like about Jujutsu Kaisen, I, I kind of have those same issues with, with Black, Black Clover. Clover. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so I guess I just have to see more JJK and see if the writing of JJK starts to get better because Black Clover's writing got a lot better. It just – I feel like it – It took a while. <laughs> but yeah, one thing – like JJK is better from episode one than Black Clover. It for is. Sure. It really is. For 25 episodes, I definitely would say the first 25 of JJK destroys the first 25. First 25, I agree. Oh, no question. So, I mean, yeah, we're going off. Of, if we do it that way, it's not even close, actually. <laughs> and when you put it in, because I didn't, I didn't feel that way about any of the fights I saw early on where we're all hype about the Boogie Woogie and Hanami yeah, fight. And all yeah. that. I didn't feel that way about any of the fights no, in the first no, 25 no. of Black Clover. But no, no, some of the later no. shit, when Asta and Yuno start getting their, you know, overdrive and soul drive nonsense it's just well, like okay going now, nutty. yeah now it's like lich and all that it gets really cool i do enjoy jjk i enjoy most of the characters like i don't think there's a character i don't like yeah uh i guess the point that i'm making is like megumi i'm just 50 fit like he's cool i just like him like yeah. i don't feel over the moon for he, him whatever. i like his ability i also thought that he was way stronger when you first see him i thought that he was outrageously strong i don't know why yeah. he just looks like it uh he gave me hiei vibes too i guess he is also the killer uh Sasuke yeah, yeah, type. For sure. He gave me Hiei vibes. I thought he was really strong, but then come to find out, he's actually, it's not that he's weak. He's just also pretty early. He's, is he yeah, a first just, year too? Yeah, he's just a noob. Yeah. He like he's a noob, which is fine. His but power I, looks stronger than it actually is, is what I'm, yeah. what I'm saying. He's like his power master. looks stronger. Um, But yeah, I was saying I like the girl, uh, no, Nabara. Yeah. I like her. Her power is cool. And at the end of the season, they really gave her. Some time to shine. I like that shit where she's like fucking putting the nails in her own arm and shit. Um, and just, I don't know, showing off. I, I like her a lot. She's cool. But yeah, I like her too. Uh, I hate saying the Sakura because whenever you have a team that's two guys and a girl, it's yeah. like, I think you're always going to end up comparing the girl to Sakura. And I hate yeah. doing that because most people shit on Sakura. Yeah, a lot of, because Sakura has a bad connotation now. Yeah, Sakura and has a, yeah, I don't think it's fair to put that on her. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to call her the soccer of the group. So I've been trying to avoid that the entire episode. Um, and she seems to be a bit more useful, even though I really don't think that soccer deserves all the time that she gets. But that's a different she topic. She doesn't. She doesn't. Yeah, that's a different That's topic. a different topic. We could probably do a, one of our short videos on Sakura and how she's actually a pretty fucking cool character. But yeah, let's not get too sidetracked on that. Um, 
But yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen has some real stakes with the side characters, I would say, because like I said, I did not expect that uh, Junpei guy to die. Like That shit fucked me up. Also, I did want to talk yeah. about this. When he did die, and the main character, Yuji, gets really pissed about it, and he talks to Sukuna and is like, help me. And he says no. Yeah, Sukuna's like, nah. And, the, and both the curse and Sukuna are laughing at the main character in his despair. Like, he's He's in one of the worst moments. Well, his friend just died in front of his face, and he wants, like, can you help me turn him back? Can you do something? He tells him straight, tells him straight up, fuck no. no. Like, I'm not helping you. And it kind of reiterated to me that the demon living inside of him is is actually evil. Um, yeah. If I, didn't, if I didn't know before when he said, I'm going to go around and kill all your friends right now. Uh, that's when- that's a point in the favor of the show where we don't know we don't know if Sukuna is always going to be there to help, right? Like, Because Sukuna might just end... Because whereas the Ninth Hound Fox is not the villain of Naruto, no. right? So he the, he even ends up becoming Naruto's fucking pet. He's like a best little... Yeah, he's his best friend. But Sukuna might end up being the final boss. Or yes. or they might end up becoming best friends in Sukuna. He just harnesses Sukuna's power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. Because we already see the transformation with the, the signs all over him. I can, see, I can see a point where the main character might get some of Sukuna's... Uh, symbols all over his body and in the mouth but then it's not fully and that's like his version of controlling it like i'm yeah. accessing 25 percent of his power right now some you know the typical shit yeah uh the all for one one for all you know oh, i'm using as much of the qb chakra right now i'm, I'm cloak one cloak two all that i, I can see sukuna level one sukuna level two i can see that 100 percent. you can see that coming the hollow mask for ichigo i can only be in it for six seconds we've seen this song and dance we've seen it we've been there but yeah, I like him telling him I'm not going to help you. So at the very least, because I know I said earlier, whenever the main character fights, I'm always going to think of it as, well, if you start to lose, Sukuna will just take over and win for you, which has actually happened already. But uh, maybe not every time now, because he did have. Yeah, a, that was a good swerve. That was a good. It swerve. was the Yuji fucked Mahito up himself. He just got mad and start, and even Mahito was like, "Yo, his punches hurt now." <laughs> he was like, "That shit just hurt." He's like, "What just happened?" All of a sudden, your attacks hurt. Also, it, but even... Okay, so that's interesting. Because in the same fight where Sukuna didn't help him, in that same fight, Sukuna did help him. Because there was a point where he tried touching Yuji's soul. And oh Sukuna God, was like, Sukuna was like don't that. you fucking do that again. Don't ever. I'm here. Listen, bitch. Don't, don't touch me again. Don't and then ever. so he tried it again, and Sukuna was like, all right, you're about to get worked. Don't you ever. And he was like, where am I? He was like, you're in my domain. Try to touch my fucking soul again. You hear me? So they they still because that was a good swerve because they wrote it in a way where Sukuna didn't help him, but then Back even the still up. in that fight, something happened that forced Sukuna to help him. Back right? the fuck up. So he told that curse, right "Don't now. you ever try Crazy to touch me balls. again." You see this shit? He's on A B repeat. <laughs> I said an A point and a B point, and that shit's looping. Right? <laughs> Frazier is stuck. Don't do me. <laughs> Don't do me like that. Yeah. Oh man, this yeah, the anime is it's it's pretty good though. I enjoy watching it. I just think yeah, that uh, it was a fun watch. One of my problems with the newer animes that have come out in the last, I want to say, five years. I, mean, I guess this kind of started with Attack on Titan too. So several years ago now, tw- Attack on Titan was twenty thirteen, I think. Something that's happened with anime culture is become mainstream, right? And I really don't like how flighty people are with their opinions on every new anime that comes out. Yeah. And this really struck me with Jujutsu Kaisen. So 2019 was the year of Demon Slayer. And I feel like like, it's the best anime ever made. The best anime ever created. Everyone's going crazy. It's on Twitter. It's everywhere. You had to watch Demon Slayer. It's literally the best anime you'll ever watch. You know, Demon Slayer is good, but calm down. Uh, Now, Jujutsu Kaisen, 2020 into 2021. I, I'm getting the same overhype. Oh, the manga sales are through the roof. It's outselling One Piece. It's the best thing ever written. The story is so crazy. Animation, bester, better than anything you've ever seen. Better than Demon Slayer. Like, this is the best anime. If you're not watching it, you're stupid. And now, fucking 2021 has Tokyo Revengers. And I'm literally seeing the exact same sentiments about Tokyo Revengers. Oh, the manga sales are through the roof. It's literally the best fucking thing ever. It's If you're not watching it, you're stupid. <laughs> like... I, I just feel like every year you get one uh, anime or manga that comes out and the whole anime community just kind of like switches to this hive mind that it's the best thing ever and kind of like fuck the old thing. Fuck Jujutsu Kaisen now. Like fuck. Yeah, it happens quick. My it hero is quick. also being discarded by a lot of people. I've, I've something 
that's something it's just so weird to me because my hero had that hype my hero had it the, it's the best thing ever hype and it's i think my hero is absurdly oh, i think my like, hero is, is so good very fucking it's not the best thing ever it's not but the best i would thing if ever. you right now if i needed to make a tier list like it's above jjk yes and it's above demon slayer yes and um, it's not close either to me yeah with my hero's development so far and it's you know it's not really fair because my hero's so far along yeah. but uh it's not close as far as what is better to me. Like my hero is better than JJK and Demon Slayer. Like that is and, not, and that's not a hot take. It's like over now that we've mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, I guess you know. Know, fucking throw, but even though that but, shouldn't be hard. But but my hero, the point is, at one point it was like this is the new best thing. This is what yes. Shonen is, and then Demon Slayer came out. It was like this is Shonen. Blah, blah. Yes. And then JJK, JJK was like, this, this is now the greatest. Now Avengers is like, oh my god, this is what Shonen is, and it's like, oh my oh, god. Um, JJK. Is, and I've, uh, I've heard people even say, like, I've seen people talk about how JJK is what makes an, a, a great shonen. And in comparison to My Hero, as if as if it does something that's strictly better than My Hero. And yeah, that's and not I don't, clear to me. Like, I don't, I don't understand get that how, at all. My Hero I, has a much better villain to me, a much better protagonist, like a protagonist that I can actually relate to and not just one that's dumbly strong from episode one and breaking world records and learns every technique immediately with no fucking training really like he just kind of oh here's a black flash i'm just gonna keep doing this now like it, it i don't know it's like the, this is the new best thing and they just get swarmed up in the in the hype and i think that's yeah that's one of the things that um i guess that's why so many times throughout this this episode i've kind of quantified my statement by saying i really like jjk i think it's really good i really enjoyed it but the reason why I feel that way is because the, the cultural zeitgeist around it is that people love it and that it's the best anime out right now and it's the best shonen and it's yeah. one of the best shonens ever made and it's shonen done right. And when I watch it, I don't get that. When I watch it, I get Black Clover with better animation. Yes. I get, oh, this is Bleach and Naruto. Like yes. I, I see the clear Bleach it's Naruto influence. Literally that for me. And, and I still do not connect with the main character yet. I'm sorry. I just do not. I do not connect with Itadori at all yet i just i don't i do not connect with this character i've been trying to i've actually said that i don't really connect with any of the characters to be honest yet like it's 25 or whatever episodes in i'm not really connected to any of them too strong if not okay if they kill one of the characters right now if any of them die uh um, i could say i'm connected to nanami i definitely think i'm i like nanami a lot i like him um, a lot too but if they kill him this early i'd be like damn sucks but we're only 25 episodes and you already killed the main character in episode six and yeah. Gojo was still alive and well, I just like, okay, you I killed Nana, you killed Nanami, but like jo Nanami Gojo's still around. Me, it would get to me. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be like, damn, he was just an old man tired of, tired of working as an accountant. Like he just wanted to live his life. I, I don't know. I shit would get me. <sighs> yeah. People are just too flighty with their opinions on, on anime. It just changes yeah. too much. I feel like you gotta, you gotta stand on one of them. Like, at one point, you got to say, all right, this is where I'm staking my claim. For me, I have not seen an anime better than Attack on Titan in the last 10 years. Nothing that has come out in the last 10 years is better than Attack on Titan. Y'all can fucking debate your grandma. I don't care. Attack on Titan, especially after that season that we just had this year, it's not. Come on. Like, we got to, at some point, we got to draw the line. I'm drawing the line right now. You got to stop. You got to pick something and you got to stand on it. Attack stand on, on your Titan's opinion. Really and I would, which I, one you like. And even, okay, so even if you want to say, if you want to say, like, oh, Kenny Frazier. The, the comparison is unfair between My Hero and JJK because you're basing Season 1 of JJK versus all of My Hero. It's like, okay, that's fair. But like uh, Attack on Titan... Season 1 of Attack on Titan is better than Season 1. That's what I was going to say. Season like, 1 of come Attack come on. on Titan is coke. Like, yes. Like, actually outrageous. Like, the female Titan is insane. And the stakes are super high. And it's, like, I don't even have to go through all of it. Everything about Attack on Titan is just... It's probably not even fair. I shouldn't have, you know, I'm an asshole. I shouldn't even have you brought Attack on Titan up. I shouldn't you have brought are, it up. But everybody already knew you, bro. Yes, that's true. Everyone, <laughs> like, everyone who listens to this already knew that. You are every, you are an ass. But yeah. JJK is sick. Easy watch. Very fun watch. If you haven't watched it for some reason, uh, watch. If you like anime, watch it. I think it's really yeah. good. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Um, but I think that it's, you know, I don't think, you know, I don't think it's top 50. Maybe it'll be top 50 in three years. Yes. Maybe like, holy like, shit. Like, give it time. What's wrong with giving it time? Just give it time. What's that's wrong with giving it time before saying it's the best thing ever? That's I guess that's another point. Like, just let's watch what happens. But nothing and, happened yet. Look, nothing happened plot wise. Yeah, literally that makes nothing. it great. Like he the got a plot few fingers. Hasn't done anything. He's the, done. We, come back. 
we've learned the lore a little There's bit. There's been a tournament. And but the plot hasn't done anything. Like the plot yeah. hasn't gone anywhere. We're just yeah, like, it okay. Hasn't. The current plan of the enemies is to capture Gojo. So I'm guessing that the next arc is going to be capture Gojo. Um I don't really see how that's gonna be feasible, but there was a barrier that was able to keep him out, so he's not all powerful, I guess. Yeah, they went to go get like Pandora's box or something. Yeah. But um, anyways, we can move on to listener letters. Yeah. Because we final have some listener letters wanna... that have been stored up. Yeah, okay. Well, would you did you want to say something? I was gonna say final thoughts on JJK, but I feel like we did final thoughts three times. But yeah, I, I do kind of feel I I okay. Definitively, I do like JJK and I'm going to continue to watch it. It is so, so good looking. And the fights, some of the best anime fights I've ever seen. It it pleases my eyes. Uh that the story, triple kick, the triple kick on the the plant demon, it was like like yeah it was like Super. a horang or some shit from Tekken. so cool yes i know exactly what you're talking about i really don't like the story so far but that's because it's very early and you just have two strong ass characters on both sides that are introduced from episode one and i feel like both of them have to be dealt with in some way for me to take any conflict seriously and an anime about conflict it's just hard for me to take the conflict seriously with the strongest uh, sorcerer and the strongest demon both present essentially at all times. It's just really hard for me to take it seriously. So yeah, that's I'm, my I'm, biggest gripe. I'm mostly in agreement with you. I, I do have hope and I do see inklings of light that I think the story is going to go somewhere really interesting. Yeah. I, the, there's been a couple things I've seen that the author has done that I feel shows competence. So I am excited to see where it goes. I've liked everything I've seen. Uh, I guess my only gripe, to make it clear, my only gripe with JJK isn't even necessarily with JJK. I, I guess it's just with the fan base and saying that it's the greatest shonen they've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, and only 24, 24 episodes. episodes. It's kind of so wild. Like, it's just too, it's, it's a bit wild right. for me. But, but yeah, it's cool. But anyway, we can all move right. on. So let's move on to listener letters. All right. So our first listener letter comes from Austin, who says, can we just talk about how amazing it was with Luffy and his brothers? So real quick, this is... Definitely in response to our One Piece episode. So he's talking about Luffy and his brothers, where both of his brothers were able to get the same power, which, by the way, great way to introduce mass amnesia. I'm not really sure what he meant by that. Mass oh, amnesia? Oh, he's talking about spoilers for One Piece. Spoilers for some pretty late One Piece. Um, Luffy has two brothers, but early on, you only know of one brother, Ace. Ace has the Marimara no Mi, which is the power of fire. Ace dies. Uh, we learn that after a different user dies, their their power goes back into the to a fruit. In a flashback, we learn about their other brother, Sabo. Skip forward. Sabo had amnesia after the accident in his childhood and didn't remember Luffy and Ace for however many years until he did remember, and then he went to the tournament to get Ace's fruit, and then Sabo ended up getting Ace's fruit. Yep. So I was really happy when Sabo came back in One Piece. That was one of the... I'm pretty sure... That's, so that's Dress Rosa. I'm yep. pretty sure I was reading it, because that arc is long as hell, so I, I did not watch that. Yeah, I only watched like the end of the arc with the fight with Doflamingo, but... I remember reading it and thinking, holy shit, this is so cool that Sabo's actually alive because I fully believed he was dead. Damn. I'm not going to lie. I actually thought, I may, I, it's probably because I read it so fast. Like, I did go through One Piece so quick. I'm talking about 500 chapters and maybe two months. It was a lot. It was a lot. So I, I, I kind of missed the hints that he wasn't actually dead. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to lie about this. Like, I this, this, I, when, when he was pretty much brought back into the show i was like holy shit that's actually really cool i was really happy about it really happy that he ended up winning the tournament and getting the fruit uh at one point i thought that wasn't going to happen but he ended up getting it um there's um a really really sw- subtle hint on one of the chapters where it's at ace and whitebeard's grave where there's like there's like sake cups there yeah and i don't remember exactly what happens but i want to say like the cups were left by like marco and someone else but basically there's a hint where essentially they they show Ace and Whitebeard's grave, and they show an extra sake cup. Oh. And back when they were little, the bond of Luffy, Ace, and Sabo was they all like drank from these three sake cups. Yeah. So they showed on Ace's grave a sake cup, and that was like a hint to a lot of people, like, "Oh shit, did Sabo like put that there?" I love how outrageous the One Piece fandom is. Yeah. They will find every little thing that Oda has put into a chapter <laughs> and dissect that shit. And it is there is a million of these types of conversations about every little chapter. I feel like every chapter you will be like, did you know that the picture in the background of crocodile ship? (laughs) It's like, did you know that big mom's daughter is in thriller bark as the fuck? Like, it's just so 
And there's so many things you can sink, sink your teeth into. Yes, it's a lot. It's very I small. They don't. It. I don't think they draw much attention to it. And it's just like, oh shit, there's a socket cup on Ace's grave, and it's like so good. Uh, all right, so next question comes from Austin as well. So he says, "Wait, what was the question? Were we just?" Talking? It wasn't really a question. He was just talking about how cool it was to have Luffy and his brothers, where both the brothers were able to get the same power. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Ace. Like how cool? Like just how cool was? It? And we both agreed that it was really fucking cool. The mirror, mirror, no my. Yeah. All right. So his next question is. He says, now I'm not one to boast about beating people worse than me. However, I live in a college town with a gaming bar with Smash and a projector. When I heard frat bros speaking about being able to beat all of their friends, I found my bar tab for the night. I start with my main Fox to gauge their level, then move down the tier list based on how they were. Eventually, it got to the point where I would have them pick the character. So he was letting them pick who he would play as, which is like Holy a very disrespectful shit, way go. of saying I'm way shit. better than you. You could literally pick... I love that shit. It actually turned out to be pretty great training overall. The real kicker is the more I drank, the more I could just go with the flow. So I actually played better. Have you guys ever found any weird training scenarios that seemed to work? Uh, Also, not a huge fan of Ultimate, but I definitely respect it for what it is. However, I do bounce between characters more in that version. He plays Ridley and Wolf, but also play in Cinderor and Dark Pit. I refuse to use any melee characters, so I don't mix up any timings. So a couple of things. I've heard several melee players say that if they play any other Smash game, they refuse to play like Fox, for example. Left hand would not play Fox in Ultimate. He refuses because he mains Fox in melee, and he's not about to have two different Foxes in his head. Yep. So a lot of top-level players protect their, I guess, character by not playing the same character in a different game and then ruining you know, some of the thought process that you might have. So he plays like Pokemon that's, Trainer and shit like that's that. That's one of the reasons why I can't play Falco in Ultimate and in Smash 4. Because I really wanted to, because I just love Falco. I yeah. have a deep love for that character, even outside of Smash. But he just doesn't. If I were to learn how he plays in those games, it would ru- it would it would annoy me when I play melee. Because I try to play Falco like melee. I try to do short hop lasers and I try to do dare dare shine combo. And like you just can't do that. That's not who Falco is in that game. Yeah. So I'd have to learn. I'd have to go against what I want to do to learn how he plays. And then if I do that when I play melee, I'd be all fucked up. So. so I will say this. I have played Melee and Ultimate pretty much, yeah. I've played Melee and Ultimate while having taken a couple alcoholic beverages. And let's just say I am not like you. I'm not better. Uh, I have more fun okay. for sure, but I lose my competitive uh, ability completely when I'm under the influence of alcohol playing uh, fighting games. I'm just not as responsive blatantly like to myself. So at that point, if I'm drinking, it's probably with other people who are drinking and also playing Smash for me, at which point it's fun it's because it's not, fun. yeah, it's not like I'm the only one intoxicated and everyone else is just sober beating my ass. Uh, but then you say, have you ever found any weird training scenarios that seem to work? Uh, not really. Most of my friends who play Smash are all on the same level except Stango. Stango is like a god to us. Like he's literally, yeah. you know, peak 35 in the world. And so his Smash ability is far beyond anything that we are able to accomplish. But for the rest of us, we're all just casuals and we all kind we of all play. We like to get better and be as good as we, we all like to play and get as good as we can be within the limit of we're not actually taking it. Pet, yes, like we're not, like not going to start traveling to tournaments anytime soon. Yeah, so we all end up around the same level because we yeah, just kind of yeah. play with our friends. Like none of us are so much better than the other one. I feel like, right? Yeah. I and feel we, like and we know the world. Like none of us think we're Mihawk. Like we know. Yes. <laughs> like yeah, we're all we know very... how good we are. Like we just yeah. have fun. I don't have any interest in going to tournaments for ultimate. Yeah, and as far as like interesting training scenarios, like not really. Like I just I figure if I just keep playing over and over again, I eventually just improve. I I guess for me. For me, when I think about it, training is really watching a lot of content. I watch, I absorb so much Smash content. I love watching Tweak uh, on Twitch. Uh, I like watching MK Leo. I like watching Zero when he was a thing. I like watching Nairo when he was a thing. I guess he's back now, but yeah. I really enjoy watching the top level players play. And I see shit that I never would have thought of with characters that I play. Because they a lot of yeah, something. Nairo came back, he fucking advanced Sephiroth for he did. a day. He showed that. One of the immediate things he showed with Sephiroth that I, I didn't even think about was running off the stage, uh, B reversing a neutral B, the fireball, the Giga, Giga Flare thing, B reversing that and shooting it towards the stage and having it explode as someone is trying to recover to the stage. It's actually insanely good for edge guarding against certain characters. And I didn't even think of that. And when I saw it, I was like, holy shit, that's insane. Like, that is insane. Yeah, uh, it's pretty sick. 
it just adds another layer to Sephiroth's already ridiculous edge guarding. I think he's like the best character to edge guard with. But that is training for me, is watching better players than I do things that my mind didn't even think about and then trying to do those things myself. I just pretty much add them to a list of plays because when yeah. I'm playing Smash, it's like, oh, this, you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh! too. Like everything kind of comes back to that for me where I have like a list of plays in my head. And until I see someone else do it sometimes, I don't even consider it. Another example of this is I noticed that Tweak literally will use Sephiroth's up B without charging it as a movement option because it's like a quick zip in any direction. So it's actually really good because it's omnidirectional. He just kind of like zips one way or another. I saw him using that in the air to land, and now I use that as a movement option. I didn't do that before I saw Tweak do it. Like, I didn't even think, like, holy shit, this is actually really good for that. And that's also because I don't play a lot of Smash Ultimate, if I'm being honest. I, yeah. I'm more so spectate. Like, we don't really play that often. Watching but, uh, Smash content is a great way to get better. Uh, I know there was a point in time when I was with me and uh, my roommate. Um, we've played Smash over so many years, and then like, we won't play each other for a year. And then we'll play every day, right? Yeah. I don't have a oh my God, this yes. roommate anymore. But there was a point in time when we were living together where we hadn't played Touched Melee at all, and we just randomly started playing again. We were super rusty and laughing at each other. But we didn't practice. We literally were just like, hey, you want to play? And I would go down, and we would play for like two hours, and then we'd be done. So in between that, those times, I wasn't practicing Melee on my off time, but I was watching Melee tournaments. And I noticed day to day, I was – getting better faster than him just like in this little microcosm yeah because i was just watching tournaments and watching falco do shit and i was more and also in the time where we weren't playing melee i was always keeping up with melee whereas he wasn't yeah so i was picking up and doing things quicker than he was even though before then he was usually always better than me when we kind of came back to it i was staying consistently ahead of him in pace just because i kept more engaged with the melee content that was out there yeah that's pretty cool um but in terms of training and weird techniques uh in terms of like being drunk and being in the zone like not being drunk but i've been in the zone like i've i've been like in a zone state where you play really really good uh but it's kind of just like you know it kind of just happens yeah um, and i've experienced that from you as well like i remember there was one day where i thought i would never beat you again oh yeah 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 you had gone to I was a just tournament like playing, yeah this is smash 4 you had gone to a tournament and when you came back we played and i could not deal with your captain falcon at all and i was like i don't know what the fuck happened at that tournament yeah, and I was like, he must have played a lot of friendlies and talked to a lot of people because I just could it, not deal. It put me, it did put me like in a state. Like I played a lot. I was trying to do really well in the tournament, and so like in that tournament, I, I just remember just wanting to do well, playing playing known names that were known to be better than me, and beating yeah. people like beating people that had names in the community. Yeah, I remember playing people that had names, not beating. Like I played, uh, me and Cairo played against. I want to say it was Nakat and False. The cat oh, and false are both really fucking good. We yes. did not beat them, but we took them the last game. Yeah. And uh it was like a really fucking really, really close game. And I, we did really fucking well, both of us. Just stuff like that kind of puts you in a headspace afterwards where you're like, oh, it's like when Frazier won Atlanta, it it puts yourself in a new headspace where like it kind of breaks it breaks something. You're like, oh, I can do this. Yeah, I think a lot of it is psychological. And uh, I do want to talk about that for an episode of the podcast, just competitive gaming. I have a lot to say about that. So much to say about it, and I'm sure you yeah. do too. But just but competitive in of, gaming in general and the mindset that goes into it. Yeah, in terms of training, no weird training techniques. I think training, unfortunately, or fortunately, if you enjoy it, it really is just a grind, but it's knowing how to grind. We talked about it in the Smash episode where Katar really showed both myself and Stango yeah. um, how to practice properly. And it really is just the grind and, and practicing properly. If you practice for 100 hours, but you're not practicing properly, somebody who is practicing for 10 hours can make more progress than you if they doing deliberate practice. Yeah. Something I read one time, it's like practice, practice, like it's something about it needs to be deliberate. It needs to be difficult because if what you're doing while you're practicing isn't difficult, if you're not being challenged, then you're not practicing. Um, I agree with that. I feel like I would have never become the Yu-Gi-Oh player that I became without McCabe and other strong players around me, but mainly him because he was my main testing partner. Yep. Uh, I feel like him being better than me initially made me become better. And then I feel like we kind of laddered each other. So at one point I'm better than him. And then at another point he becomes better than me. And then I become better than him again. And, and by doing that over and over again, steel strengthens steel, like a oh, steel yep. sharpens steel. So over time we laddered each other because I guess it was in both of us to be good players at some point. Like it just, it needed to be uh, worked out. It needed to be trained and exercised like any other muscle. 
But once we did, it had great results. He won several prize cards, uh, won an ARG, went to Worlds, which is something I still haven't done, something that's like huge for Yu-Gi-Oh players to do. And uh, yeah, he's a, he's an amazing player. And like, I, you know, I've obviously topped a ton, one of the most successful players in the game's history, like won a YCS and a household name. It's funny so because I never would have thought that start where we started. When I mess around on Dueling Book, I, I have my my Dueling Book account is a fucking troll account. It's called Fraser Smith Fan. Um, that's like my username. But whenever <laughs> I play randos on Dueling Book, not whenever, but I, I want to say thirty percent of the time, I get a PM or somebody messages me <laughs> either them asking me if I am Fraser, or I'll have people blatantly say, "Are you in contact with Fraser?" Like, "Hey, do you know? Are you in contact with Fraser?" Uh, so it's pretty funny. Like, yeah. Like, like, oh, isn't he retired? Are you in contact with him? So. Why would I name myself <laughs> Fraser Smith fan? Or I've had people is, ask, like, are you Fraser Smith? I'm that like, is such a narcissistic thing. I'm like, thing no, do. I'm his biggest fan. <laughs> I'm not going to act like I don't have some narcissistic tendencies. Like, pretty much everyone who's ever played fucking Yu Gi Oh! But, like, come on. That is just ridiculous. It's fucking uh, funny, yo. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's our take on uh, the whole training thing and just getting better overall. So that wraps up this episode of the I'm There podcast, episode 14 on Jujutsu Kaisen and our listener letters. I want to give a shout out to our patrons on Patreon. Mm-hmm. So we have Xavier, Garen, Quest, Nate, Austin, and Connie. Thank you guys mm-hmm. for subscribing to our Patreon, helping us out. The podcast does cost money to run. So you guys helping us with some of these costs is fantastic. And we hope to keep on bringing you great content over these next couple of weeks especially if we end up going to another fucking lockdown and anyone has to stay in the house again, which I assume is probably going to come sometime in the fall, winter, because, you know, at that point, no one's going to really want to be outside that much with it being cold anyway, and it seems like a good time to lock it down. Lock but it down, uh, baby. if they're going to lock us down again, God damn it, we'll be giving you two episodes of content a week regardless. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Me too. I want to get locked down. <laughs> Why do you want to get locked? First of all, you don't leave the house. Hey, man. Lock us down. Lock us down? Lock, don't us, lock down. us down. I kind of like, I do like working from home. I will say that. That's I the will. only thing that pisses me off about the lockdown, like being lifted, is that I think it's bullshit that companies are like, all right, you got to come back to work. It's like, no, I already proved I can do this at home. There's yeah. no reason to come in. That's how I feel. I don't want to ever go back to an office. Like, we know, know you've we can shown do this at me, home. You've shown me the world of working from my bedroom. I don't ever want to leave to go work again. Like I some jobs, obviously you have to go in, but there's a lot of jobs where you don't. Well, I'll tell you right now, as an accountant, you do not have to leave your bedroom to work. And I've been doing it for almost two years now. Successfully. I've gone through two year end audits completely remote, which is insane. If you know what an audit is Um, So going forward, accounting should almost never be an in office job. You might have to go in the office once a month. Yes. Yes, they actually, yeah, my job plans to bring us back at some point in November. They've already pushed this date back five times this year, so I don't think it's going to happen. I think I think they're going to just say New Year's at some point. Then they're going to say, you know, February. And just, It's been pushed back so many times that I don't believe them when they say, oh, we're going to go back. But even when they say we're going to go back, they say we will never go back to five days a week. Good. They said it's going to be two days max. So Because you, you don't need to go into the office every day. Yeah, like, it's a waste of everybody's time and money. It, it is. It really is. And it's something that we've all just kind of accepted because I guess at one point technology wasn't where it is now. But the pandemic could not have happened at a better time. Let's just say that. Yeah. Because if the pandemic happened, let's say, in the 90s, disaster. Yeah. Like, it, this is it, a, it is a disaster. Bad. Do not get me wrong. The pandemic is a disaster. But where technology is right now, we can do so much with computers at home now. Yeah, I mean it's not even close. It, there's like if it had to happen, it, this is a good time for it to happen where we can actually work from home. Because I would have, I imagine, I would have lost my job if technology wasn't where it is now. Yeah, like 10, if I could 10, not fifteen years ago, you would have lost your job. Yes, like I could not functionally do my job without the way technology is set up now. You just couldn't. Yeah, some some of the chat programs were just not there. Like yep. it, it, yeah, and. But, uh Having the like, like for files, like, what would you do? Like, would you bring home a bunch of files and you bring home? It would just be a mess. I can't even, I don't even want to think about it logistically because it, it yeah, seems yeah. like <laughs> I, just thinking about it is making me sad. But yes, this is the perfect time for people to actually be able to work from home. And I think that if you can work from home, stay safe, work from home. I don't think companies need to force you to come back to the office yet, but you know, whatever. We can, yeah, we'll discuss a little, that little quick and, and side rant. Yeah. All right. Well, we're out. See you. Have a good night, day. Thank you.